is fear. Our natural reaction or just lack of knowledge. Eight years ago, I came here to Poland for doctoral studies in political science. Six years of lessons at the university, delivering lectures, dozens of articles in five different languages and 300 pages of thesis. So finally, one year ago, just before making the last step and becoming the PhD, I went to the library, I took eight books, I was sitting next to the big white table looking at those books. I grabbed my thesis into my hands, I took a deep breath and I put it away in the another corner of the big white table. And I left. And I never came back. Now, what do you think is a big why? And even maybe I would never give up like that. Given up, isn't it? No wonder, because 65% of all of the time, people tend to judge rather's behavior rather than considering the circumstances. This is so-called fundamental attribution error. Now, the fundamental attribution error exists because of how people perceive the world. And we perceive the world in a very similar manner. Raise a hand those of you who attended the school or the university. Now raise a hand those of you who work eight or more hours per day. See system. We are all children of one system. System which every day raises fear. Now, if fear is born in the system, is it possible to win with it? And how to do it? And you know what? You can do it. You can fight fear with knowledge. Let me show you the way. Last time, when you felt you were scared was during your school times, right? And yes, school tries to prepare students for adult life, but using methods invented hundreds of years ago by Prussia, country which 200 years ago invented new educational system, method of raising blind citizens, perfect patriots. And for those times it was very needed. In the new educational system, the perfect amount of pupils in one class was 30. Exactly this number obliterated all cultural and religion differences. Thus one group couldn't dominate the other. It was no place for individuality. How many pupils was in your class? Do you remember? See? System, which every day raises fear. System where the first seed of our fear takes its first root. But the system change and people's, cha people's fear changes with it. Generation of our grandparents and parents, how did they perceive the world? They tend to build practical, secure careers. Born in the 50s, generation of our grandparents and parents was obsessed with economical security. They tend to build practical, secure careers. For them, a secure career was like green loan. And happiness for them was a flowered green loan. What makes us happy today? Oh, we want everything. We want a great job with development, with money, which brings joy, which brings success. We want families with brilliant kids speaking three different languages in age of five and playing ten different instruments. We want to be loved by others. We want to travel, to have friends and many, many more. And without this magic loan, we are unhappy. We are scared. So, at the very basic level, we are unhappy and scared when our expectations exceed our experiences of reality. And system with technology makes it so much worse. It makes unreal look real. It plays with our imagination. So we use it, we see it, 
and we imagine and we want more. But what we also do, we fear. We fear that we don't succeed what others do. So here it comes. The biggest fear of our generation, not to be loved by others. But from the very beginning, this is a very natural instinct. Every animal knows it is more safe to be part of the troop and you have more chances to survive as part of a group of animals rather alone in the forest. We as animals, we do our best to become a part of the group of animals, of other people. But for us, this very healthy instinct, thanks to technology and development, was transformed into the problem. So now we know millions of reasons why we can be scared, why we can be unhappy. Is it old plus educational system? Is it growth and development and technology? Is it our background, relationships? Millions of reasons why. But sometimes the source of our fear is unknown. It comes from nowhere. The story of mine is completely new for everybody who knows me. My friends, my colleagues, and even my family. So let's keep it between us, okay? Because my family will be worried for sure. And yes, I know this is a perfect idea ever to keep the secret between hundreds of strangers, but here it is. It was normal summer evening. I was on my way home after grocery shopping and I was standing at the bus stop waiting for my bus and suddenly my heart started to beat so fast. It seems to be it will just break my heart, break my chest and will jump along the street and I will never be able to catch it again. I was trembling and shaking and everything I could see was darkness. I didn't know who I was anymore and where I was. And I had only one thought in my head. Am I going to die right now? You can never forget this feeling. This was panic attack. But those times I didn't know it was panic attack. For me, something like panic attack didn't exist. And no wonder, 36% of people who are having attacks or anxiety disorder know what they have and are treated. Nine of 10 of my friends that I have been spoken to either don't know anything about panic attacks or never heard about it. And I was one of them. For me, for those times, combination of two words, panic and attacks, it meant only one Funny thing, it's when you are going shopping and you buy brand new shoes, for example, in Dara and next day you can see it 50% discount. It's, oh my God, panic, right? But as a rationally thinking person, I understood something was wrong. So I went to check everything. Blood pressure, heart rate, all possible checkups and everything was fine. So I decided to make next step and to use very popular thing, mindfulness. So I tried different mindfulness techniques. I have learned breathing. I have been watching different yoga YouTube videos where the lady presenter was so much slow. I remember I couldn't handle till the end. I was like, come on lady, go straight to the point. You don't help me. It was just not my way and I didn't understand why. So I started self-education, reading tons of books and articles, looking for the reason what it could be. So this is what I have learned. People tend to think a lot about 
doing stuff consciously and non-consciously, they tend to think about their minds and clearing their minds. But in fact, our conscious me is not so much in control of us comparing to our brain. Consciousness is a very limited thing. It is able to do one task at the moment and to retain three to four objects at one particular task. For example, you are driving a car and you are consciously concentrated on the road and here your phone is ringing and you are answering the phone. Here you are not concentrated on the road anymore, consciously. You are not multitasking, you are switching between these two tasks. And what is your brain doing at this moment? It is responsible for everything. What is your body doing at this moment? What you are doing right now? You are sitting, right? You hold your back, you are hearing, you are breathing, and you are seeing me. And in fact, you don't see me, but only photons that are reflected in the light are moving in the particular order, so you think you can see my shape. Everything is work of your brain. It is brain that gives the signals to the central nerve system and controls us. Put a hand in front of you and flex your wrist. Now you presumably had a thought. I was thinking, okay, I'm flexing my wrist and then you did it. This is how it seems. But it doesn't work like that. In the 17th, Benjamin Libet conducted a very famous experiment. The task of this experiment was very easy. The test subject had to decide when to press the button. And the scientist with the help of the electroencephalogram, noticed when the brain was activated, when the person made the decision and when the person pressed the button. So it turned out that the brain was activated half a second before the person made a conscious decision to press the button. Now, this seems very strange, but modern, more sophisticated researches show that this is a very serious topic. Brain was first. As Dr. Kurpatov says, you think you have brain, but in fact, your brain has you. This gave me understanding that maybe I shouldn't be looking for the reason why I have panic attacks, because I can have millions of reasons why. Is it a fear caused by society or development or technology or old educational system? But I should be looking for the thing that is controlling my panic attacks. I have to understand what is controlling my panic attacks and to find out how I can take over this control. So step, step by step, I started to learn about my brain and my body. And this is what I have learned. The worst thing during having panic attack is falling into the symptoms. So first, when you are having panic attack, you feel dizzy, your heart rate accelerates, you feel warm, depersonalization, you can't move sometimes. Second thing, you start to think. And what you are thinking is, oh my God, I'm having heart attack. Who will call the ambulance? And if the ambulance will come, will the doctor take care of me? Oh my God, will they be qualified enough to take care of me? If they take me to the hospital, what they will do with me? Will I be able to do attend job interview tomorrow? What will happen with me? Will they use my health insurance? Oh my God, did I pay for health insurance, etc. Is somebody looking at me right now at this moment? These and hundreds 
of other thoughts in your mind during only five first seconds of having panic attacks. This is how you feed your fear. This is how you make your heart rate accelerate even more, so you suffer badly and longer. Instead of this, this is my lesson. You cannot give your brain the task you want, but you can create circumstances where your brain will receive the knowledge and experience. You should know more. You should learn about your brain, about your body, about your emotions functionality. Using knowledge, you create the experience and circumstances that will help you to overcome fear. Your brain is creating thoughts using the information and intellectual objects you put in here. I cannot control my brain, but what I can do, I can understand it. Like people understand all good friends. So when next time I had panic attack, what I was doing, I was just saying to myself, okay, another panic attack. Now I will feel warm, a little bit dizzy. You know what, brain, I know you are in charge of everything here, so I give you three minutes to finish all of the processes you have started already. Okay, let's have a seat. Fear caused that we don't make any decisions. We have fear because we have lack of knowledge. Sitting in front of the big white table in the library, looking at the books, trying to push my consciousness to finish my doctoral thesis only because of the society that told me I have to finish because of six years, because of hundreds of articles, because of hundreds of pages, I made this decision. I have made the decision to stand up and to live and to become the most and to become the best friend of the most powerful part of myself. You can learn, you can gain this knowledge and you can create the experience and circumstances where you will overcome fear. Tomorrow will be nine months since I last time had my last panic attack. Still think I gave up? Thank you.